Yo guys, today we are having the absolute guide of Kazuha, a most broken character and a wandering samurai of the once famed Kedehara clan with the ability to read sounds of nature. He is currently traveling the world as a temporary member of Beidou's fleet, the Crux. Kazuha is a 5-star sword user who is the best used in a support sub-TVS role due to his grouping effectiveness and sustained Animo AoE damage that can react with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo and Electro elements for increased party DBS capabilities. This guide is on his mesmerizing playstyle to the best weapons, artifacts, constellations and team compositions. We will uncover the secrets to mastering this wandering swordsman from Inazuma. So let's dive right in. Swimming forward into his talent section, starting with his elemental skill, Kazuha unleashes a secret technique as fierce as the rushing wind that pulls objects and opponents towards Kazuha's current position. Before launching opponents with the AoE, dealing animo damage and lifting Kazuha into the air on a rushing gust of wind. Within 10 seconds of remaining airborne after casting his E skill, Kazuha can unleash a powerful plunging attack known as Midair Ransom. This skill has a press and hold version. The hold version takes longer to charge but deals stronger animo damage. If Kazuha uses a plunging attack within 10 seconds of unleashing a E skill, it converts his plunging attack damage to animo and creates a small vacuum once he lands. This damage is considered plunging attack damage. And to this elemental burst, the signature technique of Kazuha's self-styled blade work a single slash that strikes with the force of the first winds of the autumn, dealing AOE animo damage. The blade's passage will leave behind a field name, Autumn Whirlwind, that periodically deals AOE animo damage to opponents within its range. If Autumn Whirlwind comes into contact with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo or Electro, it will deal additional elemental damage of that type. Elemental absorption may only occur once per use and his normal attack performs up to 5 sword strikes and his charge attack consumes stamina to unleash 2 strong sword attacks and his plunging attack Kazuha dives down from mid air and deals damage in a small AoE. If under his elemental skills effect this damage will be animo damage and creates a small vacuum. And to his passive Sawman Swordmanship, if his elemental skill comes into contact with another element it absorbs that element. Midair Ransom will deal 200% of attack as damage as the elemental type. And his next passive, Poetics of Fubutsu, after triggering Swirl, Kazuha gives all party members a 0.04% elemental damage boost of the element used in Swirl for each point of elemental mastery he has for 8 seconds. Can stack with other elemental damage boosting effects. And his utility passive, Cloud Strider, decreases printing stamina consumption for your own party members by 20%. This passive is fantastic for overworld exploration, while in combat, the decreased stamina consumption can be a nice quality of life upgrade for an on-field DBS character that rely on sprinting to dodge or to utilize an aspect of their kit. This passive does not work with alternative sprints. Moving on to his constellation, his C1 Scarlet Hills decreases elemental skills cooldown by 10% using elemental burst resets the cooldown of elemental skill. Kazuha's first constellation gives him the ability to cast his elemental skill more frequently. Kazuha's skill is his reliable source of energy and he has a great crowd control ability. And to his C2 Yamarashi Tailwind, the Autumn Whirlwind field created by Elemental Burst will increase Kedara Kazuha's own elemental mastery by 200 for its duration and increases the elemental mastery of characters within the field by 200. The elemental mastery increasing effects of this constellation do not stack. Kazuha can transform his Elemental Mastery into Elemental Damage, so C2 Kazuha is the best addition to his kit. After casting his Burst, Kazuha will gain 200 EM which is equal to an 8% extra Elemental Damage bonus. Kazuha's team will also gain 200 Elemental Mastery which his turn will enhance all their Elemental Reactions. All in all, it's easily the best constellation for Kazuha. And his C3 increases his Elemental Skill level by 3. Moving to his C4, Uzora Genpo. When Kazuha's energy is lower than 45, pressing or holding elemental skill regenerates 3 or 4 energy for Kazuha. When gliding Kazuha regenerates 2 energy per second, C4 Kazuha's passive effect gives more ways to regenerate his energy, while it's important to ensure Kazuha can keep casting his elemental bus. Kazuha is already great as a battery and can handle himself without this constellation's passive. And his C5 increases his elemental bus level by 3. And a C6 Crimson Momiji, after using Elemental Skill or Elemental Burst, Kazuha gains an Animo Infusion for 5 seconds. Additionally, each point of Elemental Mastery will increase the damage dealt by Kazuha's normal charge and plunging attack by 0.2%. C6 Kazuha can take on the main DBS role with ease, with his low cooldown. 
Kazuha 6 constellation will keep infusing his sword with the animal element, giving him the ability to swell even further. In addition, this constellation doesn't take his build away from him. With this effect, C6 Kazuha can still be fully built on Elemental Mastery and inflict significant damage while it did. Moving on to his artifact sets, Verison Venerer is Kazuha's best artifact set for any build. A two-piece buffs his animal damage by 15%, which boosts the damage he does with his skill and burst. Better yet, invest in a four-piece Verdison Winner asset if you plan to capitalize on his swell damage. It boosts swell damage by 60% and lowers enemy's elemental resistance to the element infused in the swell by 40%. If you don't have Verdison Winner artifacts ready, you can also complement a two-piece set with two Wanderer's Trope or Noblesse Oblige artifacts. Wanderer's Trope adds 80 elemental mastery and Noblesse Oblige increase elemental burst by 20%. They won't be as effective as the 4-piece Verdison Venerer, but they work better than other alternatives. 2-piece Verdison Venerer gives an Animo damage bonus of 15% and 4-piece increases world damage by 60%, decreases opponent's elemental resistance to the element infused in this world by 40% for 10 seconds. Wanderer's Troop 2-piece increases elemental mastery by 80 and 2-piece Noblesse Oblige increases the elemental burst damage by 20%. And going on to the next section, one of the most hotly contested topics on Kazuha is whether he should uh, use as a full EM build, crit build or something in between. In short, you should almost always build Kazuha with EM mainstead artifacts. EM provides Kazuha with not only increased personal damage through his wills, but also increases team damage for his Ascension 4 passive. Kazuha should almost never use in crit build, with the only primary exception being in triple animo teams. This is for a few main reasons. Kazuha triggers a large number of swells in many of his teams, especially in multi-target scenarios. These swells have the potential to trigger chain reactions that deal even more AoE damage. Kazuha's A4 talent, Poetics of Fubutsu, scales with Kazuha's EM. This buff is extremely valuable to both Kazuha's team and Kazuha himself, as the absurd elemental damage also benefits from his own buff. Kazuha generally uses a Favonius Sword or other 4 star weapons with EM or ER secondary stats, which have a support based stack. This may cause a non transformity reaction damage relatively low, especially if he is in a team without many attack buffs. Going forward to his artifact sets, Kazuha always benefits from Elemental Mastery. If you have 3 decent artifacts with EM as the main stat, then use them. And Elemental Mastery, Goblet, Sands, and Circlet is ideal. However, it's perfectly reasonable to settle for any of other stats shown in the screen rather than grind forever for the perfect artifact. And another mostly hotly contested topic is how much EM does Kazuha need. The best amount of elemental mastery for Kazuha is around 700 to 1000. The higher the amount players can get, the better he is. You should focus on obtaining the elemental mastery artifact from the Verdison Venerer domain. This way, Kazuha can have both the EM number and Verdison Venerer artifact bonuses. And then to how much ER does Kazuha need? The amount of ER for Kazuha is around 150 to 200%. This all depends on the team composition Kazuha is surrounded by. If Kazuha is in a team with lots of characters that can generate many particles, players can get away with a lower number of ER for Kazuha. On the other hand, if the team needs a lot of particles, Kazuha should have a higher amount of ER, preferably more than 180%. Going forward to the weapon section. Freedom Swan is Kazuha's signature weapon, so it's worth trying if you are really invested in him. It gives him 43 to 188 extra points of ER, almost 200 just for getting it to level 90. Its passive also increases its damage by 10 to 20%, depending on its refinement. Additionally, causing an elemental reaction will produce a sigil of rebellion. Having two of those sigils will give the whole team a 20 to 40% attack boost, as well as a 16 to 32% increase in normal charge and plunge damage. Needless to say, it's an awesome choice if you want to use Kazuha as support and see him shred enemies with EM. And his second best option is Skyward Blade. Skyward Blade is one of the easier 5 star weapons to get just because it's in every banner. With it, Kazuha's base attack bumps up between 46 and 608 depending on his level. He also gets an energy recharge boost between 12 and 55.1%, helping to keep him active in battle. Its passive does a bunch of things at once. It increases its crit rate by 4 to 8% just by having it equipped. And both his movement speed and attack speed increase by 10% when he does an elemental burst. Normal and charged attack hits also deals 20 to 40% of his attack as damage. 
It's another good option if you want Kosova to act as a main or sub DBS. And his third best option is Xifos Moonlight. This weapon rewards the character for having EM. So it's perfect for Kazua. It gives him a 36 to 165 point increase in EM. And his passive skill bestows 0.036 to 0.072% energy recharge for every point of EM he has every 10 seconds. Other team members also get 30% of this buff. So he's not only the one benefiting from it. This covers two important bases for Kazua, EM and ER as well as following him to act as a battery for other party members. The best part is that he doesn't even have to be on field for the passive effect to trigger. So Xifos Moonlight is a solid choice for support based Kazua. And moving to his next weapon Iron Sting. Iron Sting is easy to obtain as you'll be able to forge it at the blacksmith shop. It's a lucky break because it's actually one of the top 4 choices for Kazua especially if you don't want to spend any wishes. This is because it gives him a bonus of 36 to 165 EM points depending on its level. Plus, thanks to its passive, every time he deals elemental damage, it will increase all damage he does by 6 to 12 for 6 seconds, depending on the fun man. This can be stacked twice and used once every second. Kazuha is also about elemental damage, so he'll always be doing good damage with this. The 510 base attack at level 90 isn't too shabby either. And his next best option is Alley Flash. The Alley Flash works for Kazuha if you got lucky in the weapon gacha. Though it's more suitable for making him DBS oriented, it gives him 12 to 55 extra points of elemental mastery, which isn't much compared to a sword like the Iron Sting. However, its base attack is a whopping 620, and its passive skill automatically increases all his damage by 12 to 24 percent. Moving on to his team comps, this is one of my favorite teams. This team comp focuses on maximizing the freezing reaction damage by using Ayaka and Diana to react with Kokomi or Farina. Or you can use Shincho as substitute if you don't have those best Ayaka supports. And Kazuha can group the enemies together and buff teammate damage as well as lower enemies resistance. Ayaka applies cryo damage to react with hydro attachment from Farina to trigger freezing. And Diana provides you with shield and healing if you have managed to get C6, it additionally provides 200 EM buff for Kazuha and also a battery using Kavonia Swap buff and reduces cryo resistance by double cryo on team. Farina deals hydro damage on her E skill and apply hydro on enemies to trigger Ayaka to create a freeze reaction. And you can use Shenha as a substitute for Diana which should be an even better option. Since Shenha can buff Ayaka's already exceptional cryo damage, this team comp focuses on maximizing the freezing enemies while also being able to deal a ton of damage. Thanks to Shenha's cryo damage buffs and Kazuha's elemental damage buff. Moving on to his next team, F2P Kazuha Vaporize team. This free to play team is a great option for a player who doesn't want to spend Primogem or a newbie who doesn't have any 5 star characters. Even though this is an F2P team, you still can maximize the potential as well. You can use Shangling for main DBS that can output pyro damage to react with Shincho that can attach Hydro elements on enemies to create Vaporize reaction. Bennett and Kazuha is a supporters that can buff damage as well as lower enemies resistance. Shangling is a DBS in this team that deals continuous pyro AoE damage on an EM bus even off the field to trigger vaporize with Shincho. Shincho can apply hydro element to attach enemies and provide some damage and protection using his EM bus. Bennett's healing allies and buffs the teammates attack. And moving to his next team, Kazuha's best vaporize team comp. This is a team of best vaporized reaction. This team comp focuses on maximizing damage from Buto Pyro Element to create vaporized as well as enhanced output her EM burst damage. Buto's elemental burst applies AoE Pyro damage to trigger Farina to create vaporized and with the help of Bennett and Kazuha, Buto can deal more damage and easier to apply AoE burst because of Kazuha's elemental burst. But be conscious with Buto's HP because of Bennett and team. And moving to his next team, Kazuha's best hyper bloom team. This team comp focuses on creating bloom from Aida's reaction to Electro from Yamiko and Kazuha to enhance more damage. If you have Raiden, replace it with for Yamiko, which is the best option though. This team apply Electro element attached with enemies to trigger hyper bloom with bloom with the help of Kokomi, Afarina, and Raiden also can boost ER and damage by using a EM bus. And Naida applies AoE Dendro damage to react with Kazuha to create hyper bloom. And that's all I've got. Share your thoughts about this video on Kazua. Likes and subs are really appreciated. See you with another video.